Hey y'all, what better way to start Throwback Thursday with Peg McCamey and the McCameys under his feet. If you haven't listened to it lately, go to YouTube and hit it and listen to it. Now we're gonna cut it off so we don't get a little copyright infraction. So there you go. But remember, start your day with a little Bible, a little gospel music, and a little positive attitude, and I think your day will go better. Whew, speaking of better, the last 21 days were tough. Still tough. I'm still dealing with it. I still have not given up, uh, even though everything's done. I keep saying the Lord's going to step into this, and we're going to figure out a way that this young man doesn't lose his home. But it's not looking good. But I want to thank each and every one of you for your prayers. And I want to show you some pictures that we didn't get to yesterday because we were so involved in talking about how important it is for you to do the right thing, to make the right decision before the end of your life. Please don't leave your family in a mess like this. This is where I went over to DeLon, going to chase down the brother that we couldn't get his signature, and I happened upon this beautiful, beautiful field. So in a horrible, horrible day that I was getting very discouraged, very disgusted, this is what I came upon. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, of course, I parked the car, had to stop and take some pictures, and um, enjoyed uh, that trip. I took a, took a wrong turn, and often in life we take a wrong turn, but it took me three miles around this winding creek that was absolutely beautiful, and I just stopped, pulled over, took some pictures, said, thank you, Lord, for getting me this far on this journey. I didn't know then that we were going to lose the house in foreclosure, but it's, it's God's will, and whatever happens is going gonna, gonna to either change and get better or it's going to be the same. So we're dealing with it. But I love this, y'all. I think this is so cool. As a woman whose husband owned about 30 John Deere tractors, this is so funny. Insured by Smith & Wesson, security by Winchester, and funeral arrangements of John Deere. So just go dig them up. I think that is the coolest thing. And if you're a John Deere fan, I think you need to order that sign. I think that's too cool. Now, this was on the road that I made the wrong turn. So the wrong turn took me somewhere, a place of peace, a place of beauty, and just a place to reflect on why is this falling apart, and why is this one brother not cooperating, and why did the mom put him in this position? And why is this happening to this family? We don't know why, but God does. God does. And so when the end comes out, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it, but we're going to get through it. So we're going to do it. Now look at that. Last week was the happy birthday of that little boy. His name is Nicholas Blake, and he was uh, older than dirt. No, he's, he's in his 30s, y'all. Think about that. It's so funny. He was a little bitty boy, and now he's in his 30s. It's crazy. It is crazy how time flies, how time absolutely flies. And I look back and it's like, I've been doing this for 18 years. And you think about that, it just passes so quickly. And for everybody who dropped out of high school, for whatever reason you did it, go back and get your GED. I know so many people who have done it. It is, it is simple classes. You get in there, you study, you get it over with, you take the test, and that boy did it. And very proud that he did because... Um, it's one of those things you often need that little piece of paper when you get a job. And happy, happy birthday to that young man who just, oh gosh, he's in his 30s. Are you kidding me? And there is baby Zanna. She is better today. Her temperature was 102 for two days. And Ansley was worried to death, but they took her to the doctor and they signed off on everything. She had no flu, no COVID, which was perfect. I hope it's just from cutting teeth because she got all her teeth really, really fast. So I hope that it's just the pressure of cutting her teeth. But she was uh, feeling pretty poorly for a couple of days. But now, see that sweet smile? Is that not the cutest little girl? And there, we hope that very soon Malone's Pond will look like that again. But let me tell you what this four, five, six inches of rain we keep getting is doing. Makes a mess. And the water isn't clear and pretty like we want it to be, but it will be again. That's one of my favorite shots, and that was done last fall. And look at those blue skies. We've got to get back to those blue skies coming. We are going to have the time change, which is amazing. I'm so glad that we're doing that. I wish we didn't do this. I wish it stayed the same all the time. Look at that pink sky. There's something about these months and the atmosphere. The pink is so pretty. And that is overlooking Malone's Pond and overlooking the ridge and overlooking ball ground it's just it's so beautiful and uh, whoever thought that ball ground had mountain views like that but it certainly does the mountains are calling and they are closer than you think so there you go 
And there's my little baby again. And uh, sweet, sweet, oh my goodness. If you could order a kid with a personality plus, she's got that personality plus. Don't know where she got it, but she's a sweetie. Sweet, sweet girl, nanny's girl. While I was sitting in Dawson County waiting on the foreclosure at the probate court, I picked this up and I read it and I thought about my dear, dear friend, David Ralston. I miss him so much. I'm so sad that Cherie had to go through what she has had to deal with. It is so hard to lose the love of your life. And it was so weird. I was sitting in the probate court and I was waiting on another attorney to send me some more papers and I'm just sitting there wasting time. And I pick up this magazine and there's my dear, dear friend. And then on the bench in Dawson County is Clint Bearden, Judge Clint Bearden, who used to be my go-to when I needed to get in touch with David Ralston. So it was so weird. It was like I had done full circle and come home, but there was somebody very special missing. So, so everybody knew him, loved him. We, we honor his memory. This is what we're building in Ball Ground. This is the Evans, and this is the Evans on the, um, it, it is crazy. It is the house that everybody loves. This house has the coolest floor plan, the greatest setup. It is family friendly, and this is the number one selling house. It is beautiful. It is called the Evans, and I think it's the D. Um, we have it A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, D, and E, I believe, and um, just a beautiful, beautiful home. But isn't that isn't that pretty? And that is uh, that is the Evans, and the Evans. All of the houses that we're building are named after cities in Georgia. So every single house has a name that is a city in Georgia. So it's pretty, pretty cool. But today we're going to go back and we're going to talk about God. And we're going to talk about what, how did we get to where we are without God? I don't know how do people do it. Because in the last 21 days, I have questioned God. I'm like, why did you throw this at me? Why did you expect me to do this for these people? And then you let me fail at it? I didn't fail. The system failed because um, we had everything in place for the family to save their home. And for some weird reason, um, the HUD housing, housing Urban Development looked at the file and decided it would be a cleaner finish to just auction it off at the courthouse because it just, zam, it's over. You don't have to wait for the probate. And I thought, how could anybody sitting behind a desk make that decision that somebody's going to be homeless because it's more convenient that way. It's easier that way. It's simpler that way. Let's make it simple. That's what they said. Let's keep it simple. And I'm like, no, let's save their home that they've had since 1997. Well, it didn't happen. And so I said, God, what did I do wrong? Everything was in order, everything they needed, but they took the easy way out. I think in life often we take the easy way out. We decide, well, they made me mad. I'm just going to end it. Um, they uh, did what I didn't like, I'm just going to end it. I have no commitment to anybody, I'm just going to end it. I think we see that too often. And I was very fortunate last year to go and interview a wonderful man who just went to be with Jesus. And Jesus was so happy when he got there because this man is one of the greatest Sunday school teachers you've ever seen. And I have a, uh, the interview we're going to do today it's about 14 minutes long, and, and it tells you a little bit about why we are in the trouble we're in, and it's because we're not honoring God. And I laughed because um, I spent time with him, and then I thought, oh my gosh, we agree with everything he says. Why doesn't everybody listen to this wonderful man? Well, he's gone now. And those before him are gone, and those who he taught, many of them are gone. And we need to look around and say, we need to listen and we need to learn from those older people. Often those older people are pastors or Sunday school teachers or maybe just a counselor, but we need to learn and we need to listen. And so today I want you to get you a cup of coffee, be ready because I don't want you to get up and move. I listened to this whole interview several times and I kept saying, well, this is going to offend somebody. Somebody's going to feel like they've had their feet stepped on and, and they're going to be all, Ugh, you know. Well, the truth will stand when everything else fails, so I want you to listen to this interview. Then we're going to have some of uh, Mr. Ella J. And then we're going to share something about two of my favorite people. But today is a day to truly reflect. And today is a day for me to tell y'all thank you because I know that I got as far as I did with stopping this foreclosure because of your prayers. 
and I know that y'all made a difference. Everybody I've talked to knows somebody who got in a mess with a reverse mortgage, knows somebody who died and had a will that was not like it should have been, knows somebody who probably died with a will and then they looked for heirs forever. Make it simple. Keep it simple and, and help your family not only to grieve when you leave here, but to make it easier for them. Don't make it complicated. The one thing I, I will always remember, my mama said over and over, Sugar, do what you want because I won't be here and I don't want to make it hard on you. Do what you think is right, Sugar. Do whatever you want to do. I was so thankful for that because my mother trusted me and she knew that I would take care of her until the end and I did. And that's what it's about. It's about trust and love and commitment. And so today, we're going to share a little bit of time with a wonderful gentleman who is married to the love of his life for many, many years. She passed away about four years ago. And the end of his life was not as much fun because he missed his beautiful wife. And as we talked, he, he talked about commitment. And it's so important. I know some people who are watching us who've been married over 60 years. And that is such a commitment. There's, it's, it's till death do us part in sickness and in health. And there are so many people who have gone through health crisis. When I look back, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've had some issues going on that are from the surgery a couple of years ago. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Don't start this again. Don't do this to me. But God won't put more on us than we can handle. Is that right? Well, sometimes I think he trusts me too much. But... Stay in faith. Believe that he is on the throne. He is still on the throne no matter what happened at the courthouse yesterday. And trust me, I was wondering and I was questioning. And I was saying, God, how could you let this happen to this, this guy who didn't deserve it? But it's, it is. It is what it is. So we'll see how it plays out. And we'll see how, um, you know, maybe God will step back in again. So we're going to take you to an interview that I think you will enjoy. Most of my viewers, I would say 98% of my viewers will agree with everything he says. 98% of my viewers will know that this flag, that Bible, that is what we need to stand for, we need to believe in, and we need to, need to stay strong in both. And we are seeing every single day people are burning the flag, they're throwing the Bible away, they are not listening to what we know is the truth. So today I want you to sit back and you're going to hear... You're going to get to see Mr. Whidbey's interview first, and then we're going to do some of Dwight's music, and then you're going to get to go to 57 Heaven, and you're going to get to do a little trip with uh, the master of craziness, Mr. Ella J. So stay tuned. Here we go. All right, we're going to talk technology, because today's technology, we are actually recording you on an iPad, which is a thing of today and of the future. When we look back, before telephones, before electricity, you are a water finder. What do you call that when you take your stick and find water? What do you call that? A water locator? Mm, when you do your, the, the, the stick oh, and oh, find water, oh, what do you call yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, whenever you, uh, <laughs> I can't even think of it. Uh, take a stick and a yeah, peach tree and you know, find water. Diviner. Diviner, yeah. yes, yes. Now that's the way the world used to be. Right. Do we think it was a better world then? I you think so. It. You better believe it. Yeah. I can tell you the reason why we're in the shape we're in. Tell me. Because they've got away from God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They don't put God first. If you want to know something, you ask God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will work. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why marriages don't work. That's the reason why children don't mind everything. You had to, when uh, you had to do everything that God said to do, mm -hmm. to live, to be, uh, do the right thing. If you didn't, that's the reason why we're run to death with all, uh, uh, ever, in my opinion, and I've mm -hmm. been shown that. Mm -hmm. I know it to be true. Right. Uh, if you don't put him first mm -hmm. and ask him, when you get up out of bed in the morning, when your feet hits the floor, you you continue praying. Ask him to lead you through that day. And his garden angel will take care of you mm -hmm. that day if you've been saved. Mm -hmm. Every man, woman, boy, girl, that uh, has a 
the breath, the breath of life in has got a soul. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that they put him first. See, they, uh, that's the reason why I hate these things so much because, see, visitation is a, a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who my next door neighbor is. Mm -hmm. And they don't want you over there. Most of them is foreigners from somewhere else moved in here. Their culture is on. This country is going to be overrun by a foreign country, and it's not a not going to fire a shot to do it. God has showed me that, and you know why? Because we get weaker every year. They do not know what their kids are doing. They don't know what they're on this phone. What's what's being seen? What's talking about? Their morals is zero. They have no morals no more. That is the reason why that uh, God is senseless on it. Leprosy was the first disease that was put on man. God has never took it away from him. all these diseases through the time, through the years, has been uh, just put on a man. He's given them a remedy to help it. Everything I've seen, they say leprosy is still going on today, but they've got a remedy for it. Now it was most feared back in Jesus' time. Now look at what's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, different ones all through this these years, scenarios, these storms, these tornadoes and everything. People said, why he don't do it? God is a merciful God. He ain't going to do no such. Don't tell me he won't let the, uh, the devil, uh, the devil of this world, the, the prince of this world, who is he? He is the devil. Well, when, uh, when we do our shopping, when do we uh, go and, and eat out? Most of the time it's on the Sabbath day. He's not pleased with no such thing. Mama done her cooking on a Saturday and got it ready, covered it up with a cloth. We didn't have refrigeration. Hey, all of that was done in, through, the, through the years. And uh, you didn't have the problem. You had a hundredfold, uh, 90 to a hundredfold of all your vegetables each year. You didn't have to go out there and poison them and, and do all of those things. You didn't have these chemicals going in there killing people today. Mm -hmm. All of this, now the diphtheria and all of these different types of diseases that's come through years, have they took it away? It's still there, but they, they inoculate the kids now for all of this different thing. He's given them a remedy to, to help it. Mm -hmm. The storms, the tornadoes, they've tried to change them. I even... Uh, put planes up there and so on and so forth. Why? Because he's telling them. New Orleans was destroyed by, you see what happened a few years ago. We know exactly what took place. Mm -hmm. God has not took it away and he's not going to take it away because every generation is getting more weaker during them kids are sitting there and they can't even make chains. They can't even, uh, they can't even change money. Mm -hmm. When it comes down there to buying, you you better not go down there and, and uh, go and get you a hamburger and in there and, and uh, give them. Uh, they say it'd be so much, and they got so much change. If they couldn't put it in the computer, I was in born and raised at a time when we had general stores and they had to wind it out mm -hmm. on tapes. Yeah. The tax is figured. Everything is figured. It's reordered on figures. Mm -hmm. Everything is done, and the kids now sit just as quick as they get home, and all they do is sit, and, 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 and I'm not so much opposed to these, but I'm opposed to what it's doing to America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sending us to hell. Mm -hmm. Every generation is more weaker as it goes along. And He's dead on. Mm -hmm. There's that not is, an argument we could ever have about that. That is my opinion. That's and, and that's the truth. And there's so many people who stand with you and, and agree with everything you're saying. The problem is we have to get them together because it takes numbers 
to get us back on that straight road. And we can do it, but man, it's been tough because I think we're taking the easy route. There's no common sense anymore. Nobody has any common sense. I handed a girl at Ingalls some the right money with a little bit of change one day and she said, oh, I can't do that. I said, what? And I had to tell her how to give me my change. And I thought, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? But yeah, we need more of you in the world. We need more of you. And uh, what can we do to, to help these kids? Well, the only way they can do is to turn back to God mm -hmm. and ask Him what to do next and first in their lives and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why if people, uh, and I was shown exactly, uh, a good lady told me, and I'll, I'll tell you just a scenario about about her, she come to me and she said, Jason, have, have, have you have you been saved, didn't you? And I said, yeah. She said, well, uh, I want you to promise me something. I said, Lord, what, what's that? She said, she said I, I want you to uh, I pray and ask God the right one to, to choose for your mate. She asked them, you're getting to age now, you're going to start going to reserve. I said, that's none of, I thought to myself, it's none of her business or God's business. I want to marry the most popular, the most uh, sexiest looking gal they are in the country. But that's not important. That's not what God wants you to do. He's got a mate for you if that's, that's the way he wants it done. So you've got to ask Tim. I I went ahead and I promised her. And she she told me said you pray, and I never did have no problem with. Her. I was going to a girl and I got pretty serious with her, and I thought she did. Now, well, I went with her about four years, and it come up to the situation that uh, I was going. Uh, I'd went to high school, and I I didn't take a lot of bookkeeping, ledger work, and typing and stuff like that. In high school, we didn't, or nearly didn't go to college that much anymore. No, but uh, I went to, I started going to, I wanted to go to Massey Business College. That's the one I could go to mm -hmm. at night, and uh, it helped me a lot. So I went to, to LJ. It was the closest place I could find. That when I got off from work, my regular job, I went to LJ, and. Uh, Mama would fix me a little a snack to have to eat, and then I'd, I'd go on up there and I'd go to L. J. and, and uh, go to school. And uh, so I was, uh, started home, and it got to bury me. That woman, uh, it's, like I say, I was going to this girl, and so I, I said, what am what I going to do? He, he reminded me of what I promised that woman. My name, my neighbor, she was a real sweet, good person. She she knew the Lord, she knew mm -hmm. what was in And uh, so, anyway, I started, uh, I got around uh, Talking Rock up here, above Jasper. And I started praying. I said, Lord, just help me, just show me the right one. I left this world. I did not know when I come through Jasper. I didn't know anything of any sort. I knew when I turned off over here on Highway 5 where Mom and Daddy live. And so he told me exactly the one that and I went then, went ahead and I said, well, if that's the right one, that's what I'm gonna do. So. I went ahead and, and uh, we made arrangements and, and, and married, and it worked 59 years. 59 years. So taking God's advice was certainly the right advice to take, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, 
or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown up, everywhere and every way, here and take care of you. You're my grown up and I know you're there. I'm your grown up and you know I care. Cause it's you and me and me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck Whether you're swimming in the sea Or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge Hey y'all, guess who that is? That is the team that gets the dream done every morning when I come flying in here by the seat of my pants and I say, well today we're gonna do da 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 These guys will tell you that I have never used a teleprompter. I have no idea what you're gonna see when I get here. Depends on my mood, depends on my heart, depends on what's going on in the community. But one of the great things it depends on is them getting me ready to be here. And it means focusing the cameras, getting us in here. It means changing up the set because one day I want to be over here, one day I want to be over there, and one day I want to be over there. I kind of, you know, it's like let's keep it interesting, let's check it out a little bit, and let's do something different. I never used a teleprompter because I never wanted it to be scripted or scheduled or whatever. And I can remember when Joe Kelly McCutcheon was talking about it and he said something about you never script anything and you know something about everything. Well, I do. And I do know that I am blessed to have a couple of guys in the, in the control room that pretty much can read my mind. They know if I'm having a good day. They know if I'm having a bad day. And they know that we better walk softly because sometimes things go crazy. Sometimes we have technical glitches and sometimes everything goes perfect, but they're here and they get us on the air every single day. So guys, have you got anything you want to say to everybody today? What do you think about what do you think about what we produce here at ETC? Tell me what y'all think. Uh, let me cut it to us actually really quick. Is it fun? Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun. It's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. I've been doing me and Aaron have been doing this 
He started at the same time. Yeah, for two years almost now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, it is fun. And, and we never know who the guests are going to be. I think one of my favorite guests was the two dogs we had last week because oh, yeah. they minded so well, didn't they? They yeah, were awesome. they were really good. They were really, really good. And y'all weren't here during the years that I've had a boa constrictor on set. I've had a mule on set. I've had a, a sheep or two or three sheep on set. I've had baby goats on set. It's crazy the things that we have brought into the studio. And one of the things we hope that every single day we bring to you it's just a, a little laughter, a little joy, a little happiness because we are all facing so many crazy things. And I stressed last week about meeting a, a lady in the grocery store and we were just talking about what is your grocery budget today? And I laughed because I don't drink. Everybody knows I'm like a teetotaler, don't like drinking, don't like alcohol, think it ruined the world. I hate drugs. I know personal experience with our family, it has ruined the world. But I am addicted to this. And y'all, this is Cheerios, but it's not just Cheerios. It's Hardy Nut Medley Cheerios. And you will laugh because it took me four stores to find it last week. I went to four grocery stores. Then I walk in the store where I find it in Canton, Georgia, and I reach to get a box, and it's $6.88. There are five bowls of Cheerios in this box. And I want y'all to really giggle because according to their packaging and according to their advertising, this is the large size. This is a little bitty box. This is no more large size than I'm a size three. Are you kidding me? This is what they consider to be a large size. It's 14 ounces. 14 ounces. That's five bowls of cereal. That's all you get, and I don't usually do it with milk. I usually put it in a Ziploc bag and take it with me, and it's my go-to meal as I'm on the road. But I love it. I'm addicted to it, y'all. I'm addicted to it. If Cheerios quits making it, y'all will probably see me have a nervous breakdown because it's kind of like my drug of choice. It's Cheerios, and it's Hardy Nut Medley. Hardy Nut Medley, and it has pumpkin seeds. It has sweetened uh, grain, wheat, Almonds and pumpkin seeds. I'm addicted to this stuff. But come on, $6.88 for this little bitty 14-ounce box? Is that not crazy? This should be 89 cents. And it would have been if the economy had not gone to the devil and back. And the economy did. I think the worst hit that all of America is taking is at the grocery store. When you walk into the grocery store, it's $200. It's $200 if you're feeding two people. It's $200 if you're feeding you and a dog. It's $200. It's, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And when I met that little lady the other day, she said, you know, it's $50 is my budget, and I won't get anything. And I was like, you know, that's so sad, but it's so true. So ask me what I did with my Cheerio budget. When I found them, I bought three boxes of them. Well, I've already eaten one and a half of this one. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's like $15, almost tw it's almost $20 a week for Cheerios because I'm hooked on them. But I guess it's better than drugs and better than alcohol. So if you are trying to eat healthy, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't love the price. And it may be just something they're testing because often they do these things that they just try. It says it's heart healthy and delicious. They're right, it is delicious. And it's maple, cinnamon, Cheerios, hearty nut medley. So if you find any in a grocery store and you buy them and bring them to me, I'll pay you for them. But no, I'm kidding. I'll find them. But I did have to go to four stores to find them. So don't forget, write your congressman, write your senators, tell them we are so sick of what's going on in America. The only way it's going to change is when our voice is heard. And do you know how we can voice our opinion? The election is coming up. Don't even get me started on that because everybody knows how I'm going to vote. You have no doubt in your mind. And this morning when we started and I played Peg McCamey, there was a reason. You see this rug under my feet? I don't know if the guys can even get a shot of this rug. There's a rug under my feet every single day, and this came from the Harris Estate in Ballground. If I could tell you the story of what Mr. Harris did for me many, many years ago when I was a mom with two little baby girls and I was working two jobs 
and he used to give me firewood. And I thought it was so strange that at the end of he and his wife's life, I got to be part of helping with their estate sale and pricing some items. I ended up with this rug that came out of their dining room that I absolutely love, and I ended up with a beautiful vase that's in my bathroom that I absolutely love, and I ended up with one of their antique clocks, and um, I absolutely love it. So when we look at the past, I always think about things that make me comfortable and make me happy. We want to show you a clip now of how I do breakfast, because I do breakfast beginning with my grandmother's old coffee pot. And if you haven't had percolated coffee lately, oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah, it's got a few grinds in the bottom of it, but you don't drink that, so get over it. It is so yummy, and I love the smell. I can be in the bathroom getting ready, and I hear that da -da 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 percolating, and then I smell the coffee. So we're going to show you how I do breakfast. Here we go. Hey, morning, yuns. You better get to the table and you better get here quick. We got some percolating coffee. We got these good old ground up biscuits and we got fried bologna and country ham. And Lord have mercy, this gravy is just nigh done. And when it gets done, everybody will be a sopping, sopping the gravy, sopping the syrup and eating a big old piece of fried bologna. Yum, yum, yum. Remember, get your biscuits good and brown. Get your bologna fried up and get your coffee to percolate. And ain't nothing as good as a cup of coffee from a percolator like Granny used to use. Lordy me, boys, now I'm going to be hungry the rest of the show, even though I had my healthy Cheerios before I came on the air. Oh, no. We shouldn't have shown that biscuit and gravy because, Lord, there's nothing like it. So, we better get to some Dwight Sanford, Mr. Ella J. music. Of course, it's a good song about a mama. Because today, we're all going to be thinking about the mamas of the world. We're all going to be thinking about the lost loved ones. We're all going to be thinking about America used to be better. It used to be easier. It used to be simpler. And I think maybe we should go back to those simpler times. So let's go to a song that I bet reminds you of a simpler time in life. There's a sweet and precious mother sitting in an old rocking chair. She is looking out that open window and on her Dear God, I'm all alone. Won't you send my children home? Won't you touch their hearts and make them understand? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family, but won't you ask the children? It's a sad, heartbreaking, lonely picture of a mother just waiting to die, all alone without her children. Surely God will hear her prayer. Oh dear. God, I'm all alone. Won't you send my children home? Won't you touch their hearts and make them understand? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family, but won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? I know their homes and family, but won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? Hey y'all, welcome to 57 Heaven, and I'm going to give you a little preview, <gasps> but you can't see the engines because they're covered up, darn it, darn it, darn it, but we have a guest who's going to be in here in just a second, Mr. Dwight Sanford 
who happens to love a challenge. He loves a challenge so much. He's been doing a little bit of TV with me, and that is a challenge. That is a challenge. Can we talk a little bit about cars? Yes, we can. You love cars better than you love TV? Hello, folks, <laughs> and welcome to 57 Heaven. Uh, yeah, I do love cars. And uh, this, we have a 1957 Custom, okay? Now, that's important. It's a Custom. Lowest quality one they had when they built them. They built them for poor folks, just like me and you. It came with a six-cylinder. Well, I was driving this car around. I got it from a cousin downtown. And I was driving it around, and we decided to do a full restoration. And so we're well underway right now. And uh, as you can see, the engine is not in yet. It's over here on the stand, ready to go in. You can come this way. And the way. engine is a what? 312 Thunderbird. I don't understand why you do that. Can we not get a little well, bit Well, a Chevrolet engine don't fit in this car. No, but a 351 Cleveland? I got one over there, but they said not to use that. Okay, all right, the I got you. The interior's out. It's been redone. It's about to go back in. Might not show that up. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. And you didn't have a bunch of fabrication on this car. Wasn't a whole lot of fab going on on this car. It was in pretty good shape. We had some a little bit back there on that left quarter. And you chose this color. It had been hit color. and we didn't know it. You yeah. chose this color because why? It's the original color. It is. Gun Interesting. Gray. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to be putting this engine in. It's going to get a whole new transmission. A T85 overdrive transmission is what's going in it. And the engine's all built, ready to go in. Ronnie Harrington built the engine. And it's, uh, it's pretty much stock. It's got a little bit of cam in it. it. You won't hear a whole lot. It's just a little. And it's got the original rear end gear, which is a 370 ratio, which is good. That's about good for an overdrive transmission. Mm -hmm. And uh, all new stuff. We got new stuff everywhere for this car. It's all new wiring. It's had a new wiring harness. <clears throat> now tell me about the, the wheels. Are those the original stock. wheels? Okay. No, they're not original no. for this car, but they okay. are stock on another 57 Ford. Okay, okay. Yeah. And the color uh, looks great. Who did the paint job? His name was, uh, it's top secret. It's highly classified. Oh, who did okay. That paint don't job. tell me. Don't he tell don't me. He don't want me talking about it because he don't want me. no business. Okay, I got you. And I got, <laughs> you. I got you. Now let's, let's show a little bit of this color because it is pretty awesome. I don't remember this being an original color. I remember the blues and the greens, and yeah. but I don't remember this color. It was original color. Pretty flipping awesome. I know. Yeah. And, now, uh, <clears throat> now, what about the trunk? Was the trunk in good shape? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was in good shape. We worked... Uh, it's all... Well, it's it's locked. I don't have the key. The history of this car. Tell me how many miles were on We it. think... I don't know. Probably a bazillion, no telling. Mm -hmm. It... Uh, Ronnie Harrington is who brought it to the county, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, he said it came from South Carolina. Okay. And he, I don't know who he sold it to, but my cousin Brent DeFore is who wound up with it. And it sat inside in the drive for, for many years up at his house, and me and him got to talking, and we worked out a trade. And then I was driving it around, you know, I was just going to use it for like an old driver. And then I thought, boy, it's just too cool. Let's do a full restoration. So we're, we're well underway. This thing will be coming together real soon now. And we do things right. We don't leave stuff sitting out in the rain or the snow. Right. And we do it right. And it stays in the dry. And it's going to always stay in the dry as long as I have it. And, uh, and 57, why is that 57 so important to you? When you, I was you got a, three of them, so it has to be important yeah, to you. I know. Yeah, yeah. When I was a little boy, my brothers <clears> had 57 <throat> Fords, and a lot of my heroes, including Wilburn DeFore, my cousin, and uh, Winford Dotson, he had lots of 57 Fords. And uh, I always grew up loving 57 Fords. There my daddy go. had one, it was yellow and black. And the first car I ever And can drove. I say, right there is about to turn into a yellow and it black. Is, it is. Now, it's going to be hard for people to understand, but that is a frame-off restoration, and it is complete frame-off everything Absolutely. is getting done. This yeah. got the same thing. This car and can, can we give a mention to Candy, who's sitting over there in the corner? Candy Kane, that's her name. Because Candy is how we actually ended up talking cars, yeah. because we did a parade together in Candy. 
And yeah. she did a good job for us. Yeah, and uh, that's the old, uh, that is uh, Stan Childers' old car. And? Stan had it before he died. And, uh, he was the I principal of the school? Yeah, he was principal of the middle, or the, uh, the primary school for mm -hmm. a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was in the school system forever. And this is the same engine you're gonna put Thunderbird. in the other one. Thunderbird, yeah. yes, yeah. Thunderbird yeah. engine. And your obsession with those engines is? I just like them. They got a nice little sound to them. I like the sound. Yeah. And uh, they're plenty powerful enough for what I plan to do. With what this about car. mufflers and noise? You don't seem to like the noisy cars. Uh, not much. Uh, Is that from being a police officer? No, I don't know. No, I don't reckon. But uh, this car has uh, what do you call those mufflers? Blast packs? No. Cherry bombs? No. No. It's that new thing they got. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, All I know is glass packs and cherry bombs. I can't think of the name now, of it. Now, tell me about the interior. Who did the interior in this? I don't know. I don't know. Stan had all this done. Okay. I think some people in South Carolina is actually who restored this car. Best it looks ever. awesome. Uh, it looks awesome. Yeah. I love this car. And it's great for parades. And yep. we decided it gets 12 miles to the gallon. I was kidding, but no. they don't get no whole lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The difference in men and boys, the price of their toys. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you yeah. happen to have really, really good taste when it comes to toys. So, you, you've got three 57s in here. Is that the end of your 57 rain, or are you going to go for more? There's that one in Jasper I'm wanting to get. Oh, uh, we're going to get that one. We're going to have to. We're going to have to get to working on right. Tightwad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to have to get to working on him. Yeah, this is a really, really cool car. Yeah. Now, let's go back to this baby, which is, she's kind of your pride and joy, right? It's, it's going to, well, this new here is going to be nice, too, when it's done. But right now, this car is by far the nicer one. The, yeah, I mean, and it really was the cheapest model they made. It was, yeah, it was the cheapest model they had. It had a little six-cylinder with a straight-shift transmission, no radio, no clock, <laughs> no carpet. It was just a low-end model. A lot of business guys uh, use these. Are you going to put an automatic? No. No, it's getting a T eighty five overdrive transmission. Okay, okay. And uh, a lot of army army officers and and big companies, you know, they they give these to their people that work for them, and they drove them around. Mm -hmm. okay. I myself think that this car came from an army base, but I don't know. You know, I saw some things that I thought might have indicated that it came from an army base, but hmm. who knows? Interesting. You know. Interesting. Now back to this complete complete job. Okay, when that one's finished, it's going to be black and yellow? Yep. Because your daddy had one like yep. that? I was 13 years old. Wow. And he used to let me drive it up there with him where we'd sit and wait on the bus. Wow. Wow, yeah. how cool is that? Is this one going to get the 351? No. No. It's getting the 390. It's right here. It's ready to go. I see. It's 390 covered up. High We're performance. taking care of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 66 yeah. model. GT motor, they call it. So what stage is the body in in this one? I haven't been down there in a while, but it's coming along real well. Same guy's doing it that did this one here. The secret guy. The secret guy. Yeah, yeah. we can't release Is that, that why you sing Secret Agent Man? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why <laughs> yeah. I sing it. It's all if you about tell my me, guy that to works on me. cars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you tell me, you'll have to kill me. Right, right. Okay. All right. You obviously are a Ford guy. Would you? You love the Chevelle. You had a 66 I'm Chevelle. I'm not necessarily a Ford guy. I do okay. like Fords, but I love Chevys, too. I okay. love Mopars, too. <clears throat> Mopar. Yes. Great, 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 great cars. era. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, is there a Chevelle in your future? Who knows? There's Hard one I know of that if a guy would ever come off of it, I'd buy it from him. He understands that, but the I have not Ludville? received the call. The one in Ludville? Didn't say where. <laughs> okay. But you'd like to know, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, I would. I would. Yeah, I know. I would. I would. But <clears throat> this car's going to be an automatic transmission. Is it? Done, done. Right there it is. There is the there transmission. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and again, when you look at these pieces and parts, um, you you do some work at one shop, some work at another shop, yeah. and you put it all together. Now, yeah. what did that 283 come out of? It come out of a 66 Chevrolet Impala. Good engine. Good engine. Good engine. Love yeah. them motors. I had a 70 Impala with a yeah. 283. Yeah. yeah. Love them 283s. Yeah, yeah. Now, are this you This is in... 57 heaven, but we got a few other things in here, too. Yeah, there's a few other things. If somebody's in the market to sell a car, are you interested in buying? If somebody's sitting at home watching us and they have a car that they'd like to sell, 
If they can get in touch nice with us. Nice 58 Ford Fairlane. Yes. Call me. Call me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and we'll just say you can call him at 404-375-0590. Yeah. 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 And we will we will take care of business because that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about search and rescue these beautiful cars. And you have tell me the history of this one that is a frame off restoration. This car is a 57 Ford Fairlane. Mm -hmm. Not a 500. Ford made 50, uh, 19 models that year, okay? Wow. They made 19 models in 1957. They outsold Chevrolet that year. <gasps> they better be glad they did Don't because they was it. in deep with all these models they yep, made. Yep. But they did. They came out and it's fine. And uh, <clears throat> it's a 57 Ford Fairlane Club Sedan, okay? It's not a Fairlane 500. Wow. This car... Is they're pretty rare too. Back in my days when we went for dots and all them boys had them things and they was driving around with them, I'd sit at Pumpkin Center on my bicycle and they'd start to pull out there, uh, coming out from the crossroads. Check this out. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. They're checking on the extended warranty in my, for my Can transmission. Can we tell people that you wrote a song about Ella J? I did write a song about Ella J. It's called Welcome to Ella J. And uh, that's why I'm Mr. Ella J. Because right. the reason you can't be Mr. Ella J is because you didn't write the song. That's right. Okay, anyway, that's right. it's funny. That's right. Really funny. That's right. That's right. And uh, try to get up out of the floor now. I know that's <laughs> hilarious. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Fairlane 500 Club Sedan getting a 390 66 GT motor with a C6 auto transmission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it has a 300 gear in it in the back, back here. And that's going to go well with that setup. And uh, it's a pretty thing. I love these cars just as much as any of them. I just love 57 Fords. You know? it's I love obvious. a bunch of stuff. I it's love too many things. I love 58 Ford. If you've got one, <laughs> Call, call me. Yeah. 404-375-0590. This ain't Ted Nugent or what's that guy's name? <laughs> Fred? No, what's his name? <laughs> the Nugent dude on TV, yeah, not yeah. Ted. No, no, no. <laughs> One call, that's, that's all. all. <laughs> that's right. What's his name? Ken. Ken. Ken Nugent. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Have mercy. Oh, I cracked me have up. Have mercy. All right. Yeah. Now, we are... Seriously, this is serious Ford country, but you do love Chevrolets. Yep, I do. And, and we know the value of these cars. But how did they go up so fast? Lord, how did the value, know. They, you know... Well, they're so rare. You it, know, you don't just walk out and buy one. But Chevelle's $40,000 now if you know, get a good one. I know. And if you and, get a really good one, find, it's 60000 And if you find yes, one, yes. it's going to probably be in Arizona where this car was. Right, yeah. exactly. This car came from Arizona. Wow, wow. Yeah. And did it have any rust because it's dry in Arizona? It, 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 it is dry there, but uh, this car was in worse shape than what this one over here was. Oh, my gosh. But it ain't now. It's yeah. been fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, wow. We've done metal fab, and uh, we're about ready to start sanding and blocking most any day. And yeah. you chose black and yellow because that's what your daddy had? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. It'll be that's just cool. like daddy's car. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is really, really cool. His name was George A. Sanford. Amon in the middle. We called him Aim. There you go. You want to know what I called him? What, Daddy? No. What? Diddy. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Actually, I'm Little Diddy. <laughs> oh, that is, you're crazy. <laughs> anyway. You're crazy. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tour of 57 Heaven. And again, the next time we come to you, maybe this car will have a body sitting on it. Because right now, what you're getting is a frame. And the next time we come back to visit, this car will have an engine in it because the engine is ready. Mm -hmm. And we are certainly ready to see it and to hear it. And um, one day I look forward to hearing something to make some noise out of this shop. Yep. So, yeah, this is really You'll cool. You'll hear it. This really? is going to be, they're both going to, they're all sweeties. They're just sweetie pie. We don't call her candy for nothing. Mm -mm. She's sweet. Well, beautiful, Love beautiful cars. Babies. Thank you for letting us invade your privacy. Sure. sure see you problem. later. Bye, y'all. The American Catfishing Association is proud to present to you the legacy and accomplishments of two legends in the world of catfishing, Mr. Lonnie Fountain and Mr. Donnie Fountain. Today, the American Catfishing Association would like to take you on a journey, a journey that spans over 45 years, fueled by passion, resilience, and the pure joy of fishing. It's a story that begins in the most unexpected of places, 
The Wrestling Ring Imagine being eight years old, itching to cast your first line into the water, but lacking the means to do so. That was the humble beginning of the Fountain Brothers. Lonnie and Donnie found themselves in a wrestling ring not to wrestle, but to seize an opportunity. As the wrestlers took their break, they wrestled with fate, and the spectators, moved by their determination, contributed enough change for them to buy their very first fishing poles, a Zebco 202. Those fishing rods weren't just tools for leisure. They were instruments of survival. The brothers fished for food, scraping by with what they could catch. But adversity only strengthened the resolve of these two accomplished anglers. One day, emboldened by their passion, the brothers slipped into a nearby private pond, oblivious to the consequences. The property owner, none too happy with their presence, armed and furious, chased the brothers away, with shots echoing through the trees. In their haste, the brothers abandoned their rods, leaving behind their dreams. Fast forward 45 years, and fate intervened once more. Over the years, Lonnie and Donnie had established a vibrant roofing business. One day, the Fountain brothers were contacted by none other than the son of the once-upset pond owner. He hired the Fountain brothers to roof his house. Little did Lonnie and Donnie know, the property owner's son held more than tools and equipment in his barn. The man approached Lonnie and Donnie holding their long-lost fishing poles. The son recounted his father's actions and asked for redemption and forgiveness, returning the once-cherished fishing rods the brothers had long ago left behind. The cherished rods, weathered by time, hold more than memories. They hold the brothers' purpose. It's why they have dedicated themselves to giving back. Over the years, knowing how meaningful fishing can be to children and adults alike, the Fountain Brothers have handed out over 550 fishing rods to kids, igniting in them the same passion that ignited Lonnie and Donnie. Their journey didn't end with just spending time on the water fishing. It evolved into something greater. The Fountain Brothers found themselves drawn to the sport and challenges of tournament fishing, mesmerized by the skill and determination of the competing and accomplished tournament anglers. Through observation and perseverance, Lonnie and Donnie learned to compete, soaking in every word, every tip, every technique the catfish community was willing to share. The determination to become champions has never been more evident. Time and time again, as Lonnie and Donnie Fountain have won countless tournament events that have featured some of the best tournament anglers in the nation, throughout their journey and accomplishments, the Fountain Brothers have remained humble and generous with both their time and knowledge. Their willingness to mentor others, new to fishing or a seasoned angler, has remained a constant, making Lonnie and Donnie Fountain two of the most respected ambassadors to the sport of catfishing. Accomplishments and the journey aside, their greatest pleasure lies in guiding and mentoring the next generation. When Lonnie and Donnie were one day introduced to a kids' event by fellow anglers who believed in them, they witnessed miracles unfold. From a speech-impaired teenager catching 26 channel cats, to a wheelchair-bound boy defying odds catching a trophy flathead, having a part in their triumphs echoed louder than any tournament victory. For over 18 years now, Lonnie and Donnie Fountain have stood witness to the purest form of joy etched on the faces of children as they reel in their first catch. It's a reminder that our true victories aren't measured by trophies, but by the smiles we inspire. So, as the Fountain brothers continue their journey, they remind us all to remember the essence of our passion. It's not just in the pursuit of our own accomplishments that matters as much as the connections we forge and the lives we touch. In the end, it's not about the catch, but the hearts we reel in along the way. Thank you, Lonnie Fountain. Thank you, Donnie Fountain, for being the great ambassadors to the sport of catfishing you are. With great honor, we welcome you both to the ACA Hall of Fame. Y'all, today has been a day of reflecting, remembering, and um, I want to ask you to do something. Would you please go to my Facebook page and, and share 
This is Lake and Riley, and it is a heart in the colors of the University of Georgia. This beautiful young woman lost her life when an illegal immigrant um, who was charged with her murder ended this beautiful, beautiful woman's life. She was from Cherokee County, Georgia. So many people knew and loved her. They said when she walked into a room, she lit up the room. Let's light up the internet. Let's light up the world with this black and red heart. And again, go to my Facebook page, please, and share it, and share it everywhere. And remember, Lake and Riley, don't ever forget that name. That young woman was studying to be a registered nurse. She was born and bred Cherokee County, went to school in Cherokee County. Such a beautiful, beautiful young lady. And um, please pray for her family. Please pray that justice will be done, and please pray that we can stop the horrendous murders that are happening in the United States of America. Please pray for the family, and again, um, today has been a day of reflection. I hope that you enjoyed the day, and I hope that you'll remember Mr. Whidbey's words, without God, we are truly nothing. So pray to Him, believe in Him, and trust in Him. I'll see you again soon.